Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional system. We have the composition of f and g, f of g of x equals 4x squared minus 2x plus 1, and g of x is equal to 2x minus 7. And we're going to be solving for f of x. I'll be presenting two methods. Should we start with the first one? Let's start with the first one. My first method, pretty much as always, the more painful method, involves the following. f of g of x was written as a function of x, but I would like to write it as a function of g of x, so from there I can kind of extract f of x. I know what I said may not make sense to everyone, but that's okay, let's see what happens. Now, I'm going to start with f of g of x. So f of g of x is equal to 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'm going to start with that and then towards the end or at some point I'm going to replace 4x squared minus 2x plus 1 with f of g of x again. Alright, let's go ahead and manipulate this expression so that it may look like a function of 2x minus 7. Now notice that 4x squared is 2x quantity squared, right? So. This is what I'm talking about. So I can basically take 2x minus 7 and just square it, right? So let's see what happens if I square 2x minus 7. Well, 2x minus 7 squared, and we can kind of do that here. 2x minus 7 squared is 4x squared minus 28x plus 49. Now notice that the expression that I'd like to manipulate have has 4x squared, but doesn't have negative 28x. But don't worry, we're going to fix that. So let's go ahead and try to make this uh, expression look like this one. Okay, so for that purpose, I'm going to take 4x squared minus 2x plus 1 and write it as 4x squared minus 28x plus 49. So I'm going to kind of write the 2x minus 7 quantity squared first, but then kind of adjust. For example, uh, I do need to add 26x to make it negative 2x because I have 28x, right? Negative 28x plus 26x is equal to negative 2x. And to turn it into 1, I have 49. I have to subtract 48. So that's my first step. I hope this makes sense. This part is still, you know, the first three terms here still gives me this one. But I'm going to manipulate a little bit more because I have to work with 26x minus 48. Great, let's go ahead and do a little bit more on this one. Now, I'm going to take the first three terms is going to be unchanged, and then 26x. Now, since I want to use 2x minus 7 as my, you know, argument, I kind of want to write it this way. I can take out a 13 and write it as 2x minus 7, right? Hopefully. But if you do, you're not going to get the same thing. You're going to get 26x minus 91, right? So this is going to equal 26x minus minus 91. But you have 26x minus 48, therefore to make it turn it into negative 48, you have to add 43. Great. So we were able to take the expression f of g of x and manipulate it until we got something meaningful in terms of 2x minus 7. Let's go ahead and manipulate a little bit more. So the first three terms can be written as 2x minus 7 squared. By the way, I could have done that earlier. doesn't really matter. And then 13 times 2x minus 7 plus 43. Great. So this is f of g of x. Great. Let's go ahead and rewrite it here. Bring that over here. Okay. So this is f of g of x, but our goal is to find f of x. But why did we use 2x minus 7? Because if you look at 2x minus 7, 2x minus 7 is g of x. So I can easily, well, a lot of times we replace g of x with what it is, but this time we're going to reverse the process. Why? Because we're working backwards. That's why this method is painful. I know it is painful, but hopefully it's going to be informative for at least some people. Okay, so now I'm going to replace 2x minus 7 with g of x. Awesome. So now I'm going to get the following, and this is going to be real cool. When you do replace 2x minus 7 with g of x, you're going to get g of x squared plus 13 times g of x, and I'm writing it in parentheses, 
plus 43. Now, do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. On the right hand side, I have a function of g of x and on the left hand side, I have f of g of x, which is again, a function of g of x. So everything looks good. But remember, our end goal was to find f of x, right? So how do you find f of x? Well, you replace g of x with x. Well, a lot of times to compose two functions, for example, f of g of x, what do you do? You replace the x in f of x with g of x. This time, we're reversing the process. We're kind of like reverse engineering this composition. So now I'm going to replace g of x with x, and that is going to give me f of x equals x squared plus 13x plus 43. And that's what I was looking for. So that gave us the answer for f of x. So let's go ahead and frame that real quick and then talk about the second method. Great. So this is a really cool process. I really like the first method. I don't think I've used that before, but I, when I thought about this problem, like what kind of method I can present, and this kind of came to me. Anyways, the second method is obviously less painful and more fun, hopefully, for some people. All right. Now, we have that f of 2x minus 7 equals 4x squared, by the way. I kind of need to... Uh, why did I say f of 2x7? Okay. So I probably skipped a step there. Okay. Sorry. I'm ahead of myself. So we're given... So let's rewrite the original system. f of g of x is equal to 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we also know that g of x is equal to 2x minus 7. So here's what I'm going to do. Since g of x is given... And I'm like, why did you go through all this pain? Well, because for fun, right? Anyways, so g of x is given. So why don't we replace g of x with that. We can easily do it, right? So let's do it. So now we have f of 2x minus 7 equals 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. Great. Now, my goal is to find f of x, so, but we can't find it directly. So let's go ahead and use something more like, I don't know, indirectly. So let's go ahead and set this equal to y. My, if I can find f of y, I can find f of x. I know some folks are like, they're not the same thing. They're not the same, but we can use them for substitution. And substitution, as you know, my favorite method, right? Okay, from here, to keep a long story short, x can be written as y plus 7 over 2, and now I can use it everywhere I see the x. So now f of y from here becomes 4 times y plus 7 over 2 quantity squared minus 2 times y plus 7 over 2 plus one. Awesome. We're almost there. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. Now the expression inside the parentheses can be written as, you know, y squared plus 14, y plus 49 divided by four minus these two cancels out and the four cancels out, leaving us with, oopsies, there's no two there. Watch out. Minus y minus seven plus one. Great. So let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit. F of y can be now written as y squared plus 14. Y minus y is obviously 13y, 49 minus 7 is 42, plus 1 is 43. And guess what? We got the same answer. Well, that's no surprise. We, we should get the same answer. And this concludes the second method. I just couldn't remember the word for it. So f of x, oopsies, I just realized that I messed up with the first method something. I forgot to replace uh, g of x with x. And when we do, we're going to get the same answer. f of x equals x squared plus 13x plus 43. f of y equals, well, that's not the answer. Too bad. Let's go ahead and make the replacement because my goal is to find f of x. So f of x equals x squared plus 13x plus 43 as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.